Hi there everybody and welcome back to the Blossom Crochet channel. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to add on this really beautiful but simple border for your blanket project. Now if this is your first time visiting my channel then do just take a moment to subscribe and also click the little bell icon so that you don't miss any of my future videos. You can find hundreds and hundreds of tutorials on my channel so there is plenty to have a look through if you've not been here before. So as I say, it's just a really simple border. What I'll be showing you is how to add this simple puff stitch border. So you can see it just gives a really nice textured soft finish. So this is um, a much larger blanket that I have done. Just It's just a corner to corner rectangle. And then I've already done a few rounds of moss stitch. So you can see I finished my corner to corner piece here and then I did a few rounds of moss stitch. Now there is a separate tutorial for how to add a moss stitch border, which I will leave in the description box, just in case you wanted to add, just like I have done here. But of course you can just add a round of double crochet before you then immediately go straight into this puff stitch. It's completely up to you. So it's a really beautiful finish around the whole of this white blanket. So you can see it keeps the edges nice and square as well. It's a really good one to use. So you will want to use whatever hook you have used for your project up to this point. You don't need to change hook sizes or anything. As I say, you're just going to want a nice border all the way around your project to start off with, either double crochets, treble crochets, just something to make sure that you're even all the way around. For anyone who's wondering, this is the Dainty Blossom Granny Square and I'm just going to be using this to pop a sample border around rather than doing it around the entirety of another massive project. <laughs> so this way I can show you corners and straight edges without having to do it around a huge project. So if you are just using the yarn that you've done your first round for your border in, then just try and make sure that you are in a corner space. If you're absolutely nowhere near a corner space, then I would suggest just snipping off and reattaching in the corner. So I've got my slip knot on my hook. I'm going to insert into my corner space and I'm going to yarn over and I'm just going to do a slip stitch. So pulling through the loop on my hook. And that is literally just to attach my yarn. And then I'm just going to do a chain one. I'm then going to go straight into a puff stitch. So I'm going to yarn over, insert, yarn over and pull up, pull up nice and tall, yarn over, back in, yarn over and pull up nice and tall again. So that's twice. And a third time, yarn over, pull up tall. So you then want to yarn over, pull through all those loops, chain two, because we're in a corner space. So the corner space will be different because we need to get around the corner without any rippling or bunching up. So you'll chain two and then you'll go back into your corner space with another puff stitch. So yarn over, insert back in your corner space, yarn over and pull up tall. And again, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up. That's twice and one more. So you'll do it three times for each puff stitch and then yarn over and pull through all those loops. Chain one. So that is our corner completed. So you've done your puff stitch and we've chained one. So you will then skip the next stitch and you'll do a puff stitch in the next. So skip one and puff stitch. So you'll do it three times. And then yarn over, pull through all the loops, chain one. So you'll only chain one in between the puff stitches on your straight sides, whereas you will chain two in between on the corners. Skip one stitch again and puff stitch. One, two, and three. Pull through all those loops, chain one, skip one puff stitch. So if you work that all the way along and then I will just show you one more corner again. Okay so I've got to my corner space now. I've got one 
stitch that I can skip. However, if you don't have a stitch that you can skip at the end, just work your puff stitch as normal and then go straight in for your corner space. So in my corner space, I will do a puff stitch. And because it's a corner space, I'm going to chain two this time. And then back into that same corner space, I'll do another puff stitch. Chain one this time, and then again, skip one, and we're working back along our straight edge. So if you continue working that all the way around, and I will meet you as you get towards where we started from, and I will show you how to close off. Okay, so once you've gone all the way around, I've just completed my final puff stitch in chain one. We're not going to slip stitch into the top of that first puff stitch, you're actually going to slip stitch into the chain two to finish off. So slip stitch into the top of the chain two. I just find that that gives a cleaner finish. And then obviously you can just fasten off as normal. So that is how you should look after adding on your puff stitches. It should lie nice and flat and it should just give a really nice little bit of texture to the end of whatever project you have used it on. I really do hope that you have enjoyed the tutorial and found it helpful. As I say, remember to subscribe and follow along for all of my future tutorials. And I will see you again really soon. Bye for now.